Hello there. Once again, this is Anton from Anton Bay, and today I just wanted to make a FemForce video uh, about my FemForce collection. Kind of run through it. The first hundred issues, really. I made one before, but I kind of just skimmed through the covers. I really wanted to crack these open and show you kind of what's on the inside and why I think this is a worthwhile book to collect. Um, so issue number one dates back to, let's see if we can find it here, 1985. If you can think of what else is going on in 1985, that's pretty impressive. This book looks pretty good for an independent publisher like AC. Not a big budget company or anything like that, but you can see the artwork throughout the book is pretty substantial the whole way. Um, another thing I liked about these books was basically once you get done with the stories, they always had these little stories in the back, just little extra cereals that ran in there. Check out that moon guy, Montague Moon. Check it out. He's got a moon for a head. Anyway, this is the kind of stuff why, I mean, the art was good all the way through. The concepts are a little goofy sometimes, but I mean, you got, you got beautiful women, you got jungles, you got dinosaurs. You got a guy who gets his jaw replaced by steel. Just uh, all around good comic book stuff. And like I said, there's always a little short story in the back. And you might not always know what's going on with that story in the back, but usually it's something that ties in later to a later plot. So a lot of times you're, you're, you're following some other story and it doesn't really make any sense until, it, until you get into the, the rest of it as, it as it conjoins with the rest of the story. But the art is good. Check out that spread. That's fantastic. And a lot of these are characters that were older characters, golden age stuff, stuff from the 40s, 50s, or whatever that they, they kind of just re-brought up might have been even been some of these characters from the 60s, but um, I actually watched, uh, I saw on a, a vlog one time, this, they were listing the worst comic book covers, like the hideous, most stupidest covers. This was on there, and I was like, why is this cover on there? It's not that bad. It's a little corny, but it's not, not anything abominable. But, like I said, I've, I've shown this book, I've shown the covers a lot of times. But I really want to just get into it and kind of show you what, what, what they were like on the inside. This is obviously, this is in my top 50, top 5 favorite all-time covers of all time. Just because it's the Attack of the 50-Foot Woman spin-off cover, homage cover. With one of the team members and it's just good. And you can see. This series starts out, it is in color. It does eventually pop back and forth between color and black and white. I'm not positive which issues it does that. It's been a long time. But I've had good luck with everything from the AC Comics library. So I've been quite impressed with these, obviously. That's why I make another video on them. Not every cover is going to be, like, absolutely amazing but it's definitely is it's definitely i think better than a lot of the average of what was going on back then there was some pretty me mediocre stuff and this is actually before the big 80s black and white explosion so I mean, these books predate uh, yeah they would predate ninja turtles by at least a year or so a couple years that's when the big black and white stuff came off and everybody was making independent comics in black and white. But, you know, Femforce being an AC comic back then, I don't know what the scene really looked like for this book back in the day, but I do find it a little bit surprising at how good and how high a quality these books are for the year. Just because I mean, they, weren't, they weren't doing books quite like this. Marvel and DC, definitely. But I don't remember a lot of other companies in 1985 putting out this good of quality comic books. Not that I was, you know, I was pretty young in 1985, but 
you know, even looking back, I'm, I'm racking my brain to even think of who was producing something like this. So you got Dragonfly. Dragonfly carries on, eventually crosses over into the regular story for a while, and then gets her own book. But you can see why the art is good. This, this stuff is so... I mean, anytime you put, like, women in tubes and stuff like that, that's... To me, that just reminds me of, like, Planet Comics and stuff like that. Issue number 13, Night of the Cat. Oops. Crash. Um, issue number 14, this is one that always reminds me of Planet Comics, because, I mean, look at it. Uh, we saw an advertisement for this one a couple issues ago, but... With everybody in the tubes, just the pose, the outfits, this really looks like a Planet Comics to me. Or at least an homage to Planet Comics, which, you know, I, I highly admire those who collect them because I myself have not been able to really get my hands on one yet or find one affordable. You know who I'm talking to. But uh, if, if I could ever get a hold of Planet Comics, I definitely would. Till then, I have a nice run of Femforce, and that keeps me pretty happy. You got some crazy stuff going on. Monster creatures and just, just comic goodness. You can see the art, though it maintains a consistency of being pretty decent. The characters, always you can always tell who's who. I mean, they're, they're pretty well fleshed out. But there is a big variation in the style of the artist. Uh, here, number 15, you get your first kind of like photo cover. And we go to black and white. I wasn't sure which issue we started going black and white. But yeah, there we go. The art, I think, is still good. Still very good. I do, I do prefer this particular book in color. There's a lot of books I'm okay being black and white. And it's not like I dislike these in black and white, but this is one book that I do think works much better in a color format. Like with Eternity stuff, I, I've been big into digging through that. It being black and white, I would I actually prefer it in black and white because I think it I think it translates better. This I I would prefer in color. They have a really good colorist when they have one too, so. you can definitely see what I'm talking about with a consistently good art, even though it does change styles. I'm not positive how long it stays black and white. Like I said, it has been a long time. Issue 20. Issue 21. Victorious Rex. Nice ad. 22, still gonna be black and white. Nice, nice back cover. I also like some of their ads. Uh, at the same time, AC Comics was also doing a lot of reprinting of vintage um, Jungle Girl type titles. And just, you know, making like collection books of all the different Jungle Girl titles. Cause there was a lot. And just kind of blending them together in these big compilation books. <laughs> issue 22. Issue 23. Yeah, sometimes the artist is a little bit off. And there's one particular artist that their their work on their eyes just looks a little bit off to me. And we're in their run, I think. And it's not just one scene, it's like several scenes where their eyes just look a little off. A little too big, a little too watery or something. 
It doesn't last forever in the series. It's just something that takes place for just, oh, probably a 10, 15 issue run in the middle. But you can see why just looking at this, I you want this in color. I mean, that would, this in color would just be astounding. I'm not sure why they went to black and white. I'm guessing uh, fundage issues. The comic market was, was probably pretty tight back then, especially because they had so many titles coming out. And maybe it's just the fact that Ninja Turtles came out <laughs> and everybody started buying books like that instead. And so maybe it helped them to turn black and white around that time. But either way, they did. It's not bad budgetary issues or whatever still it's always better once you get back into the color ooh there's a definite definite sign that the ninja turtles have landed and have an effect because there you go either they're trying to cash in on it or I think everybody had a mutant turtle up here in their comic books at one point in the 80s. Issue 27. Yep, definitely dealing with some giant uh, mutant turtles in, in a sewer. And if that's not the Ninja Turtles, I don't, I don't know what we're talking about here. Yeah, that is crazy. Definitely something that you should check out if you haven't. And as far as tracking these down, these are actually kind of a pricey book to get, and they're kind of hard to find. I've been to a lot of comic book shops. I know all the comic book shops in El Paso that I have gone and asked and searched. I have never found any in a comic book store ever i have been able to buy uh different lots online and get pretty decent prices at times if you're careful and shop around but as far as like just finding these in a comic book store i've never had any luck doing that so if i i guess i have found like the occasional one in like a dollar bin or something like that but any hopes of getting a complete run or anything like that and finding it in a store, you're not going to find it. Maybe if you're in the vicinity of somebody like Mile High who would have, you know, absolutely everything, you might get lucky. But uh, even back when I lived in, in Nebraska and I went to all the comic book stores in Lincoln and Omaha, nobody had, nobody had any Femme Force comics. It's just not something that anybody carried. And I suppose I should mention that this series is actually still running. So, like, if you wanted to follow this, this book along currently, the book is still current. It, it looks quite a bit different than it does now, and I don't know the exact issue on issue that it's on. Uh, I don't follow it currently because they are pricey and they are really hard to get a hold of, even new. Still, you can see why this would be so much better in color. But yeah, they still make this book new and in color. Well, come to think of it, I can't tell. I can't remember now if they're in color or they're black and white currently. I do know they're thicker. These were standard issue sizes. You know, just regular 32 pages or whatever a comic book is. But you have a lot tighter artist on this one than you had on some of the others. Then Force 35. Yeah, I'm going to say their art has really bumped up to this point and you're getting a, like, a, there's a lot more pencil work going on here than there is on some of the earlier issues. There is a lot of shading and there is a lot of line work. And if you have a color comic, too much line work, I think looks like crap. If you're in black and whites, I almost don't think you can have too much line work. I think it always looks like the thicker, more, more, more pencil work you do in there like this 
the better it's going to look. And there's some crazy shit happening in this book. This is very good. Issue number 37. Of course, you've got some Nazis in there. You've got some great big spread pages. I mean, there's some awesome stuff happening. This is probably my least favorite cover issue issue cover just because it just looks off. It looks weird. She looks weird. I don't know. Something's going wrong with this. Issue 38. Everything else I, I, I would hold up and say this is fantastic. This is one particular issue where I just don't feel like it's that good. They kind of make the blue bulleteer look stupid. And yeah, just not, not the best. Issue 39. Now, I suppose I should, probably should mention I have a couple of gaps. Uh, I think in, in between an issue 1 through 100, I think I'm missing like two comics or three. Uh, I know, I think it's issue number number 66 I know I'm missing. And there's one uh, lower issue. I can't remember which issue I, that I don't have, but... Get a big spread there. There's some great work in this. Issue 41. I tended to think that there was more issues with color than there was black and white, but you know, as I'm looking through it, I am not positive. This is one I showed off uh, a couple of videos ago just because it's really, really beautiful. I mean, it's, it's a cool cover. And then they did... Okay, there is one comic that I have not seen. Maybe I should check that out. Uh, they've done really good with spinoffs for this title. There's a lot of different spinoff titles with it. Uh, Night Vale... Um, Good Girl Quarterly, Dragonfly, uh, Black Diamond. I, I, I liked some of their spinoff stuff, and they did pretty good about it. So, Pirates. Issue 44. Yeah, they were not afraid of Nazi women. <laughs> they did have those packed in there. I know a lot of comics these days don't. That is weird. We get one splash of red in a black and white book. Interesting. It's not even a tricolor book. Oh, there you go. Now you get one page of tricolor. Okay, that is so odd. You have a whole book in black and white. Catman and Kitten. Nice. Definitely a title that I should go be looking for, I think. Night Black. Catman and Kitten. I like that. Issue 45. It'd be nice if you could just order their back issues as easily as you used to be able to. Hunting these things down is such a pain. Issue 46, The Ravages of Rad. And if I remember correctly, Rad, their villain Rad, is the daughter of Miss Victory. And Miss Victory is actually very, very old. But she's kind of like Captain America in that she has a pill that she takes and medicine that she takes to make her a super soldier that's young. Otherwise, she's from the 40s. So... She's a carryover from an older time, but if she doesn't keep taking her super soldier serum, she basically reverts to a wrinkly old woman who's near death. So that's a little little change on the 
on the, the topic there. Number 48, looks like rad versus rad. Two forty nine countdown to Miss Victory getting blown up on a bomb. Yeah, they have some very, very antiquated type. Uh, I don't know story arc stuff. I guess it's a little bit silly sometimes. Like you wouldn't see some of the plot devices. Like, like what? Let's see what year this one is. Ninety two. I think most of the time in comics, we didn't still, still see somebody trapped to a round uh, cannonball-style bomb like we're still seeing in Femforce. So I appreciate that. But, um, this is cool, the Femforce theme song. Um, somebody told me about this, and I had forgot to even find it because I was trying to figure out which issue it is. Um, the guy who recorded this uh, with his band uh, dropped a comment in one of my videos one time, and I was like, wow, really? I do not have a record player, otherwise I would totally check this out. Uh, it's the theme for it's the theme song for Fem Force on record in the book. And we pop back into color, which excites me. Because Fem Force in color, I really feel like the book just looks better in color. You got such vibrant characters and such vibrant designs that it's just goofy to not have color. Um, Fem Force 51, another photo cover, and we're back to black and white. They must have just done a color issue just because it has the album release in there, um, which I, I'm going to have to look for and see if I can find that or find some way of figuring out that song or how to play it, uh, play, the, play the record. There is your, um, I guess you didn't call them cosplayers back then, your, your base models for the company that... This is what the these were the the models. I guess you could, they would dress them up as the characters and they do like cons and stuff like that. I don't know what they call those back then. Promo girls or promo models or or what? But I know this company seemed to be doing that before a lot of other companies were. Uh, Fem Force Fifty Three, an amazing Frankenstein cover. He looks creepy. She looks hot. That's Tara, uh, the one who can grow gigantically large. And I would say, for a book about girls, they punch the shit out of each other in the face a lot. There's a lot of face punching between women. And I don't know. I think it's kind of funny. But they draw it that way, and it cracks me up. There's some promo shots of them doing their stuff at cons. San Diego Comic Con, which you know before before cosplay was big, I'm guessing that was probably a big hit at the cons for for promotion. Uh, another Frankenstein. He looks like he's choking this one, and he's gonna club the other one with that one. <laughs> that cracks me up. Fury of Frankenstein. Um, just just typical. Typical AC Comics goodness, doing what they do. And that's another thing. This book never seemed to take itself too seriously. Fem Force 55. Get more of those art uh, uh, models. Ah, I don't know why I can't say words today. Let me move back just a little bit and top up because I don't want to lose my focus here. Uh, so there's Fem Force 56. We're still in black and white. They're still highlighting different people who play the Fem Force characters and different artists. Uh, this lady is horrific. She had her nose bitten off by Trapjaw. It looks like we're getting into all sorts of sliminess in this issue. I don't know what kind of fetish is going on there, but it looks like somebody's having a fantasy. issue 57 and it is in color and see stardust in color is just a thing to behold it is so much better than than the black and white
And they're even given a call out on the cover. This is issue 58. Letting them, everybody know that it's back in color. And I think at this point the series was hitting a pretty good stride. Um, there seems to be more issues from this era than like other... Because when you're shopping back issues, you can kind of tell when a book was at its most popular. Because there seems to be a plethora of issues from that era or that period. And this period, I'd say the book was taken off pretty well because these issues aren't terribly hard to find. This upper upper 100 stuff, pretty easy to locate in different places. But issue number 60, Regrets and Broken Hearts. You got Sin running around. Advertisements for Good Girl Art Quarterly. And there's a heck of an open page. Awesome looking. This is one of my more favorite covers. Not my absolute favorite, but it's up there. Uh, just because Tara, Vintage Jungle Girl from the Vintage Jungle Girl comics, gets the cover shot. And I always appreciate that because she was probably one of my favorite members of the team. She grows, she grows large, kind of like Giganta, and has all what you would consider Jungle Girl powers, I guess. Whatever Jungle Girl powers are. Issue 62. Lots of face punching. See, I, I tried, to, tried to say... There is a lot of face punching, and they they just punch the shit out of each other. They're also not afraid afraid to to show uh, uh, blood in this title. This was never at any point was this a um, code approved book. This was never a comic code authority book. This was never never going to be marketed to kids. It just wasn't. Issue sixty three. You got. Uh, Gargantua, or Gargancha, or Garganta, however they pronounce that. I think it's Garganta. Uh, she was kind of an on-again, off-again villain slash team member who also grew very large, and it always gave us an excuse to have uh, Terra fight her and have just like a giant woman battle. And who doesn't love a giant woman battle? Because there you go. Issue 64, giant woman battle. Totally what we needed. Totally what we wanted. Who doesn't want that? And of course, even this far back, you're still getting, you're getting stories in the back. Uh, this is a Black Phantom story. Um, there's plenty of just odd little backstories that are going on in the back. I don't know what they're throwing in her her mouth. That's funny. But yep, just a giant Godzilla-sized woman fight. Who doesn't want that? She's going to beat the hell out of a T-Rex. Perfect. Issue 65. sister my enemy issue 67 this is the gap i had the first issue i ever found of this was issue 66 so for me to not have it currently feels stupid but i don't have it and i just haven't found it um i hate buying these things individually they have some great costumes in this you know i i hate because when you buy a comic all by itself on ebay that is expensive that is so pricey. And I just, I if you can get a lot or you can get a little group, I feel much better about it than just shelling out big money for just one title, just one issue. Issue 69. And if you've noticed, the art has been I still say extremely consistent throughout the entire series. It's like it just, you'll have like a couple of issues that are a little bit off and then it goes right back. 
That is some great costume design. She even has Cave Girl written on the front of her helmet. Find some weird stuff in here. Always fighting that same damn T-Rex, it looks like. Clear back from issue one. Issue 71, Fem Force. Ooh, you can get a Stardust ring. A couple more of the models who are working on this book. Issue 72. Looks like Bad Rock on the cover. If you guys are familiar with Image, that's who that looks like. That's, that's definitely some slugging going on there. Issue 73, this is another cover that I think is ugly. This is an ugly cover. It's like some sort of painted, misty, hollow foil cover. I never much cared for it. Issue 74. Looks like a flip book. Lois Hamilton is Dawn Hunter. Nice. So even there. Yeah. I, I kind of, I'd almost rather have a, a, cover, a comic just in the back as opposed to a flip book. Because the flip book, then I always feel like, well, I'm missing out a whole cover. When I bag and board that, I'm not going to have, I'm not going to have that cover on display. And, you know, I don't know. I just, I'd rather it was just a short story in the back. I bet you we're getting into the 90s with some of this stuff. It's starting to look pretty 90s. Issue 76. Yep, 1994, definitely into the 90s. Pictures from San Diego Comic-Con, back when Comic-Cons were all about the comics. This is looking more like standard stuff that you would typically see. Um, this is a darn good issue, issue number 77. They literally fight a wave. More pictures of them, it looks like from a Comic Con. Yep, Fem Force takes San Diego. Yep, fight a wave. See, check that out. That's freaking great. Issue 78, a bad case of the uglies. Issue 79, looks like Iron Jaw is back. I keep wanting to call him Trap Jaw, but I know that's not right. It's it's Iron Jaw, but you know, for very obvious reasons, I want to call him Trap Jaw. I'm gonna back up once more time here. Eighty one, love and war. Yikes. I don't know what was happening with that? Uh, there's an example of, you can see, Miss Victory uh, reverts back to a wrinkly old woman. And it happens several times. It's kind of a plot device throughout the book. But just, it's, it's a thing that she's got with her power. And that's disgusting. Don't know what's happening with that. Like I said, some of these, it has been so long since I've read. He just looks great. He always does. Getting close to a hundred. An eye for an eye and a nose for a nose. I can't remember the gal's name who has her nose cut off, but it's it's nuts. I, I can't, if I remember right, yeah, there you go. Uh, try, uh, Iron, Iron Jaw actually just bites her nose off, so that is what happens. Issue 86. More, more Comic-Con stuff. Looks like Dallas Comic-Cons. Um, this I got in a set. I was very excited to get this because this has a little bit of coolness to it. 
It is a, the signed 10th anniversary issue, signed by basically the entire creative cast. Um, came with a certificate of authenticity. Um, I don't have a lot of signed comic books, but I was very excited to find that I had a signed Femme Force. I, I think that's great. Issue 88, another issue of Terra uh, and Gargantua probably. And it looks like we've jumped back to black and white, just bouncing around like that. Issue 89, black and white. This is one of my more favorite covers. Uh, issue 90, it's Terra, Jungle Girl style stuff. It does go back to black, it's still black and white from the few issues, but I try not to let that bother me because the cover is so, so strong with that. Issue number 89. Getting close to issue 100. Issue 92, almost to the end of the actual run that I have. Like I said, I just don't have anything much past 100. I have like a handful of various issues, but nothing, nothing amazing. No, no great quantity. Uh, Femforce 94. And the art has gone back to the, the extremely busy pencil work, extremely dense uh, stuff that they're writing on. Um, issue 95, countdown to 100. This is a great photo cover. I, I always applaud that they did that. I think it was a good idea that they they impl they, they they made their characters like like come to life in a lot of ways just by doing that. And like I said, I think that's back before a lot of companies were doing that. You didn't have a, a real model base for that character. You didn't have that that breakthrough to the real world. Um, 97. For me, these books started to go downhill. I wasn't near as into them. The art is good, but you know, you look at covers like this are nothing compared to the covers we were seeing before. These are kind of a mess. I think these covers are a mess. They're not what I, I had built up to expect. And then your interior art has somehow resorted to looking somewhat like a Mad Magazine, which isn't bad, but it's not the art I was used to, which is probably why my collection kind of dies at around this time. Um, you can tell it's just, it's not the same that it was several issues back. You know, you weren't getting stuff like that. You're getting this stuff now. It's just not as good. Uh, Femforce, issue 100. Like I said, I was probably missing three issues in there. A um, couple little mini series parts um, had issues. Uh, this was this was 104. More of the same type of stuff where the art just looks kind of like kind of like a Mad Magazine inside. It's just a little bit cartoony and a little bit I don't know. Something about it wasn't my wasn't my cup of tea. You get these exaggerated facial expressions and stuff like that. That pretty much sums up why I, I kind of died out on the series. Issue 107. They're still dealing with the same stuff. So, and the book has also taken a pretty good price hike at this point. These are $5 an issue. $5 an issue in, what's the year? 1998. $5 an issue in 98 is a lot. This book had really jumped in price, probably because of marketing. You couldn't get it anywhere, so you had to pay out the nose for it. Issue 117, you're starting to feel a little bit like more like classic Femforce, but you're not quite. Um, issue 150, jumbo size. This is kind of what the book feels like now. And you can see the art is kind of back to the way it was in its prime. Covers are kind of back to the way they were in their prime, but the book is running 10 bucks an issue now. now. It is super, super thick. I mean, you're dealing with, I don't know, a couple hundred pages here probably. 
it's at least as big as three or four comics. And you can see there's some hellacious art going on in here. But the series is still running, but they're like, I think they're 10 or 12 bucks an issue now still. This is issue 157. This is the last issue I got and the oldest issue I got. This is from... If I can find the date, it's right in front of me. 2011. I'm pretty sure the books are still running. They all look about like this, but they are, I think, $12 an issue now. So anyway, that is a much more thorough take on Fem Force than I did the last time. I really wanted to at least flip through these for you guys. It's one of the, the series is, that has been like a, a thing for me to track down. This is the hardest series I've tracked down. I'm really proud of it. And I thank you guys for watching. Um, you know what? That's my story. I'll catch you guys later. Bye.